Alright ladies and gentlemen, I'm here on the show. I'm here now to talk about some NBA news, upload NFL news. Uh, earlier uh, today about or about an hour ago, so if you haven't checked that out, go check that out. Talk about some news, I'll probably do another one in a little bit. And while I'm um, watching the Xfinity race, which I'll recap, I'll have four college football recaps tonight. Um, I'm not doing U UCLA, Oregon State most likely, but, it's, but still four college recaps a lot. Let's talk about some NBA here. So Derek Favors, uh, he says via HoopsHype.com, uh, Derek Favors says Houston would have won championships if it wasn't for Golden State. Houston had James Harden at the time, winning 65 games. We couldn't match up with him, but who could? But who could in the league? If it wasn't for Golden State, Houston probably would have won championships. If it wasn't for those two teams, Utah could have won a championship. Saying your team could have won if another team didn't exist means absolutely nothing. And even tried to sneak Utah in there at the end. Come on. Come on. Utah wasn't winning shit. Like, Houston had an incredible team. I mean, you can say what if, what if. Hypothetical. Like, Utah, man. Come on. It's just Houston choked. I mean, it is what it is. At the end of the day, they choked those years versus Golden State. James Harden wouldn't clutch. Just saying, he wouldn't clutch in the playoffs. Disappeared. So, via Chase DC Sports, Jordan Poole shows love to Houston James Harden. Shit, he said, shit, if he didn't run to the Warriors one of those years, he might have a ring, end quote, via Chase DC Sports. Hey, maybe if CP3 didn't get hurt versus, versus that year, maybe they would have made the finals. But they shot 0 of 27 in game, so, oh, from, oh, 27 from 3 in game 7 of that year. Like, they missed 27 threes in a row that year. James Harden... I would have multiple rings if it was a hypothetical ring. Just saying. But I guarantee you Jordan Poole wouldn't say this if he was on the Warriors. James Harden just had so many meltdowns in the playoffs. But Poole has more rings than James Harden. <laughs> oh, it's going to roast James Harden. So the Miami Heat. Didn't think Bradley Beal was that much of an upgrade. Per ESPN, Zach Lowe. Quote, from what I heard, the Heat looked at the situation and said, quote, we don't think Bradley Beal, who's seven years older than Tyler Hero, is 30 million better than Tyler Hero going forward. We just don't think that upgrade is worth the end quote. So Zach Lowe's basically saying here, the Heat, they don't think Bradley Beal is now much of an upgrade because, you know, he's seven years older than Tyler Hero. He don't, they don't think he's 30 million dollars better. I mean, that's fair, though. I mean, that's kind of fair, if you think about it. But it wouldn't have taken Hero to get Beal. It wouldn't have took Hero to get Beal. But I get the point. It wouldn't, it wouldn't have taken Tyler, to get, Tyler here to get Bradley Beal for me. But I, I get the point what he's saying here. I mean, yeah, he is 30, so it's not good for the long term when you have Tyler Hero who's only, what, 23? So. Jeff Van Gundy has taken a role as a senior consultant with the Celtics per Brian T. Robb. I, I've been wondering for years why Jeff Van Gundy hadn't had, you know, like a role with the team. Because he has not knowledge of the game. So, I think it's a, a, a good move. Uh, for the Celtics, he's um, at least with the team, at least with a team. So I, I don't know why any, any teams haven't got him as like a senior consultant. Kenny Martin blast ESPN for ranking Victor Wembanyama and Scoot Henderson over Russell Westbrook. Show me fucking 93 other people better than Russell Westbrook in the NBA. You got two people on the list that ain't played one fucking NBA minute. How the fuck are they better than us, you fucking idiots over there doing this bullshit on the Gar Gilbert Arena show, on the, on the podcast, or something. 
He's really, he, he's going off. I mean, I mean, Victor's better. I mean, Russell Westbrook's just not really that good anymore. But he hasn't played an NBA minute, though. Which, I get his point, because he hasn't played an NBA minute, him or Scoop Henderson. So, I, I get what Kenny, Kenny Martin's saying. Like, they haven't played an NBA minute yet. But, it's projecting the next season. If it's projecting the next season, I think Wimby will be better, but he's got a point if you're comparing last season since he wasn't in the league. So, I get his point. For sure. So, via S. Bondi NBA, Carl Towns reveals he, quote, squashed his beef with Tom Thibodeau. I don't think the Knicks are going to want you, buddy. So, I guess they've resolved their differences. Okay, who cares? So, um, Kai Jones drops a new MVP, Defensive Player of the Year, and Defensive Player Declarations after a uh, Hornets release. Um, he, po he dropped another bombshell statement, declaring himself as the future most valuable player and Defensive Player of the Year award winner, written, of course, in a signature style replay it with emojis. I mean, he used to be cool, but now he's just annoying. Drug test this man, dude. On what team? Oh, uh, the Guangdong Tigers! Ni hao, ni hao. Yeah, welcome to your new team. Uh, Kai Jones. Clay Thompson, uh, he met to the he admitted uh, the playoff defeat to the Lakers stings bad from last season. Who cares? Like, I'm sorry. Who cares? So apparently the New York Knicks per S Body NBA and the reason I talked about uh, they've squashed their beef he revealed is because the New York Knicks are gonna monitor uh Carl Anthony Towns situation. They are monitoring his situation. Maybe they could trade for him, but New York monitors everyone's situation. They're not gonna end up, end up making any moves. Like I feel like this is tweet about every player that's rumored to the Knicks and they don't go there. And nothing happens. At least at least in my, at least from the uh, last few years. Uh, so Bam at a bio doesn't care. Casual fans don't find the duo of him and Jimmy Butler entertaining. What we've done the last four in the last four years with people saying that duo can't get it done. The duo is not this. They're not entertaining. We went at the end of the, we went at the end of the day. Since they've teamed up, they have the most playoff wins in the NBA over the last four years. I mean, yeah, I guess you can say, but at the end of the day, where's the ring? I mean, rings are bust. I mean, like, I mean, rings are bust or the worst take ever because they're not really expected with the roster they have to win it. I mean, people say it's not entertaining, but they're still winning games in the playoffs, getting it done. So, so James Harden, uh, he says his relationship with the Sixers front office is beyond repair. So, the situation with him and the Sixers is basically beyond repair. Well, we get more trade requests, more trade, he has more trade requests than MVPs and ranks put together. Everywhere he goes, there is a, he, there is a problem. It seems like he's the problem. So when you lose trust in someone, he said, it's a, it's like a marriage. You lose trust in someone, you know what I mean? It's pretty simple, James Harden. You quit on three teams. It's huge. You're the problem, Mr. Harden. Um... Yeah, it's all the NBA news here from NBA uh, Central. So, the under 10 minute video. Wow. Um, oh, Nick Young is signed with the Mako Black Bears of Hong Kong. Nick Young is going to Hong Kong. The legend himself. But yeah, that's all the for NBA news. Until next time, I have a lot. Peace.